Dr. D is back. Her first episode was filled with firsthand experiences and advice, and I expect no difference this time. She is helping restore life balance by empowering women to make a decision to transform and become unstoppable. This time around, we have new questions to ask her, which means new answers and new value for you. Adelia, Dr. D. Whitaker is a trained, educated, and certified professional life coach, sex coach, intimacy coach, and master's level marriage and family therapist. She's even an author, founder of the Dr. D. Effect LLC, and of course, mental health advocate. With over 10 years of experience as a change agent, she possesses expertise in leadership, mental health, strategic planning, and human sexuality. Over the years, she has successfully aided her clients in tapping into their fullest potential and bringing their goals to fruition. Before we bring her on for another mental health talk, let's start with a question here, Adelia. What does the words mental health mean to you? The words mental health to me mean taking care of your mental well-being. It just means taking care of you. Making time for ourselves is so important, especially now. I know how busy you are as the pandemic is hopefully moving behind us. Life is returning a little more to normalcy, which means our schedules are a bit more filled. Before we get going, there's one more, Adelia. Which platform do you stream your podcast shows through? I use Anchor. Anchor, interesting. Please mm -hmm. share what made you choose that. I... <laughs> At the time, my assistant did the research for me, mm -hmm. and she, um, I think she found that Anchor was the most user friendly, and so um, we use Anchor to, you know, ho host the podcast, and then I think it streams through, you know, Spotify, Apple, um, Squadcast. Oh my God, there's so many of them. There like, is. I can't even remember. Oh, and then we're also, we just started like pushing it through Facebook as well. Okay. So it's every listening platform that's available for podcasts, mine should be available on. <laughs> that's a great lesson for everyone out there, especially podcasters that are hosts. Be sure to stream on every platform, not just Apple and Spotify, because you never know where your most listeners will come from. Yep. Thank you for sharing all that, Adelia. And to everyone listening on, it is once again time to talk all things mental health. This is a mental health break. My name is Vincent A. Lancy. I am your host. I've written two books on mental health. We have Mental Health Week and Mr. Lancy Talks Mental Health. You can check them out on Amazon after the show ends. And I am at Vincent A. Lancy. If it's your first time with us, each episode I sit down with mental health advocates and professionals from all over the world to help you on your journey. We all have a different why relating to mental health but we never know whose journey can help us most. My why came after suffering a traumatic brain injury, and you will learn today's guest why in just a moment. Before I bring back on Adelia, I'd like to share that this episode is brought to you by Tampa Counseling and Wellness, dedicated to helping individuals looking to positively transform their lives through compassionate counseling and wellness coaching. If you struggle with depression, anxiety, or other mental health issues, give them a call today for a free consultation, therapy that inspires change, and you can scroll down in the episode description to find their phone number and website. As I mentioned, we are bringing someone back on the show today who is shattering mental health stigma each day. I follow her on social media, so I get to see all of the great work she's doing firsthand. Dr. D's coaching technique is grounded in a holistic and psychodynamic approach which is used to facilitate insightful and lasting results for her clients. She supports her clients so that they can confidently stand in their purpose and let their inner light shine. Rather than its individual, couple, family, relationship, or corporate, she has the skills to assist you in piloting your success as you stand firmly in your purpose. That's why I have her back on the show today. She can help each and every one of you in a unique way. Let me bring her on. Adelia, Dr. D. Whitaker, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be back here. <laughs> it's going to be a great talk. I already know that. Would you mind introducing yourself again to our audience who may have missed your first show? 
Absolutely. So um, like Fenton said, my name is Adila Dr. D. Whitaker. Dr. D is a term given to me by clients that I have helped in the past because I um, am very well versed in mental health practice, but I am very unorthodox in my way of administering assistance to my clients. So we do doctor instead of doctor. And um, I have been in the field of mental health therapy for over 15 years. Love, love, love being an advocate, love being a change agent. And in addition to my professional roles, I am also a wife and mother and um, business owner and author and so many other things that I'm not going to get into. <laughs> very, very accomplished. And your ambition is certainly going to be contagious through your episode today. And where are you streaming from today? I'm streaming from Atlanta, Georgia. How's the weather in Georgia today? It's cold and rainy. This is perfect, like coffee or tea weather. Yes, great inside weather here in Florida. It's been chilly all day, all morning. It does get to 70s, 80s here in Tampa, but it does it's been dropping to the low 50s, which is a change for us. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> well, let's get into mental health talk. No more weather talk. What is one thing you have learned about your mental health during the pandemic? Um, one thing that I've learned about my own personal mental health during the pandemic is um, that I, I have to protect it by any means necessary, even from my own children and my husband, I have to protect it. Because I feel like as, you know, when we're getting into these roles, especially right now, because we're all having to wear so many hats, you know, especially with working from home and with the um, um, low employment rate and everything, people aren't able to come to work because they're sick or otherwise everyone's wearing multiple hats. So I have learned that I have to really protect and guard my mental well-being from, especially from others around me that I love because we give so much of ourselves yep. that sometimes we get lost in the shuffle. And so I have to check in with myself every day. I usually do a check-in at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day and say, hey, Adila, how are you doing? Um, yes, you, you know, you've given of yourself and taken care of your family, your kids and your clients, but how are you doing as an individual? And so that, that has been um, a learning and growing moment for me during this time. I love that. The daily check-ins, it is important to have self-reflection as often as you can really. There's a great example right here of how well it works for doing it twice a day. A lot can go on and it's easy to get flustered now that we are at full Mm -hmm. speed again. Do yourself a favor sometimes and slow down. It's something I've really been trying to hold myself more accountable for is these shorter breaks, even just five or 10 minute breaks throughout the hour, just to make sure that I'm not overloading. I'm taking a breath. I usually make it a walk outside or just to get some fresh air for a few minutes. I find that always does great wonders for my mental health. Speaking of good things for your mental health, though, Dr. D, what is your favorite thing to do for your mental health that is good for it? Um, My favorite thing to do? I really enjoy reading. I I used to love reading as a kid, but I, I think I lost my thrill for reading while I was in um, graduate school just because you have to read, you have to read so much. And so I just kind of lost the feeling. joy of reading. I lost the joy of reading for pleasure. And so I've recently, um, with teaching my own children how to read, I've, re- I've found my love again for reading. And I'm like, oh my God, I really enjoy this. So now I'm like, I think I picked up a book the other day and I read it within the matter of hours. And I just sat in my little nook in the window and I read and and I could not put the book down. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot how much joy this brings me. So now that's my new kick and Barnes and Noble has been my favorite place to visit. <laughs> I've been trying to hold myself more accountability. You hear me talk about that a lot as this year has passed. Now there's new things I want to focus on. I love reading as well, but as you know, as an entrepreneur, there's just thing after thing that piles up every day, something new pops up. I just set a goal for myself to do 10 pages or 10 minutes, however I'm feeling in the morning as one of my morning warmups, I call them to get ready for the day. Reading puts me in a great mood. It relaxes me. I can definitely resonate with you there. Anything that you're reading right now that you want to share with our audience? Um, I just finished a book entitled Hushed Money. Um, the name, oh my gosh, the author's name escapes me in this moment. Oh, I just, I literally just finished that book and it was so good. It was about um, a woman of color who was working in the academia, mm-hmm. who um, was being literally mentally, you know, she was in a hostile work environment. Her mental health was taking wow. a, a hit and um, 
she discontinued to work because she had, you know, different commitments and in, in her story and how it took a toll on not just her, but her family as well and how she ended up, um, you know, still going up in the ranks and making a substantial amount of money in that company, but the, the cost was her well-being. That's an incredible book for all mental health advocates. Many of us can relate to that exact feeling. Thank you very much for the book recommendation here, Adelia. I'm going to need some more advice, though. Maybe this is some more Dr. D advice. What advice do you have for anyone out there who is going through a tough time? I think anyone who's going through a tough time, I think the first step is acknowledging that something is off. A lot of the times um, we're in denial or we, um, we don't pay enough attention to ourselves that, um, you know, we, we're able to pick up on it. I think the first thing I think people will notice if the people around you are starting to behave differently, think about what you're doing to make them interact differently with you. And if someone says, hey, something's, something seems like it's off, don't be so quick to be offensive or defensive. Actually, you know, try to take in what they're saying because they could be coming from a place of love and care and not necessarily trying to hurt you. Very well said. Sometimes when things are off, it can even go back to what you mentioned before, staying grounded, self-reflection, mm -hmm. going back, just searching for what, what the root of the problem is. And the further we run away from that root, the longer this problem persists, I would say. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. In, in your professional experiences? Yeah, that, that most definitely, you know, running from it only delays the, um, the inevitable. I feel the same way here. I want to look into the future a little bit here now. I know how much you're up to. I know you're always up to something new. What new ways are we going to raise awareness for the importance of mental health in the future here in 2022? Um, new ways that I'm looking to raise awareness is to, you know, always spread the word about how the importance of mental health care, the importance of self-care, the importance of boundaries. Um, like I said, especially right now, I feel like this is a boundless time. Um, you know, not, not to be too specific, but I, um, a friend, my sister is a traveling nurse and, um, unfortunately she contracted COVID in, in the line of, of work. And she, I think she was out for a couple of days and they were already calling her, asking her when she was going to come back to work. And I was, I was blown away at the lack of empathy, the lack of accountability and just the sheer you know not having any concern for her well-being and i and i just um exactly it, fr it frustrated me and i kept reminding her like we cannot replace you your family needs you as an individual we don't need a nurse we don't need you know a healthcare worker we need you that that job can find another nurse that's but thing. we cannot replace you and so you have to take care of you even if they don't care about how you're doing um, and so that, that I'm always, you know, speaking to those things, you know, take care of yourself, prioritize your well-being because other people and especially your job, sometimes they don't. I can't thank you enough for that answer. You need to worry about yourself. And unfortunately, if you work for a company, you are dispensable. You can be great at your role, yep. but there is someone else who can come in and do that role. Take care of yourself. As she just said, your family needs you, your friends need you, and you need you. Don't let the job kill you and wear you down. Thank you again for shedding that light, Adelia. As you know, right now, normally we do the spotlight story where we look at the mental health of someone famous to let you, the listeners, know you are not alone. But on Welcome Back episodes, I want to give my guests the opportunity to shout out someone else doing their part to shatter mental health stigma. Dr. D, who are we going to show some love to today? I would like to show love to the 20 plus other women that I graduated um, from my master's program with. This was a cohort of um, African-American women across the diaspora from all different walks of life. And we all journeyed through our master's program together and crossed to the other side. And we're all doing mental health work in different arenas. We're working in the, um, you know, in the children, in the DCFS system, we're working ger with geriatrics, we're working with battered Amazing. women. Um, we're working in companies, you know, we're, we're all doing the work. And so I want to shout out each and every one of 
the women um, that graduated with me from that program, you know who you are and I love you and I see you and I value you and how you show up in all, the, all of your spaces. Incredible response and congratulations on the graduation. Thank you. Incredible. <laughs> thank you. I want to thank you not only for coming on the show today, but for showing the importance of furthering your education. I'm a career learner. I wish it were free because I would have a thousand degrees. But I also, <laughs> I also want to shed light on you saying the daily check-ins, the two a day, everyone out there, start with one a week, even one mm. sometime, once a month, just something. It's something that it's a constant work in progress for me, taking the time out of a nonstop day just to reflect. Because when I'm so tired at the end of the day, that's just it. But you also touched on self-care. Remember, everyone, if you're sick, just stay home. Not only because that's how we stop the spread of everything, but we need you and you are replaceable at your job. You only get one life. How can everybody find you, Dr. D? Website, social media, whatever you're working on. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn um, at the Dr. D Effect. Um, and on LinkedIn, I think I'm Adila Dr. D Whitaker. Thank you for sharing all of that. Everyone be sure to stop by and say hello to Dr. D. She is a great resource and friend to have. And we are at a mental health break across social media on YouTube. I am at Vincent A. Lancey, social media at Vincent A. Lancey, and the website, you guessed it, vincentalancey.com. Mental Health Week and Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health are my two mental health books. They are on Amazon now, so you can prime it tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next Tuesday on a mental health break. Dr. D, thank you so much for coming back. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. <laughs>